Hello guys and welcome to this video to learn about how to select the color of your restorations, okay? So this is a very important aspect of aesthetic dentistry, so aesthetic treatments. And of course uh, you can follow a lot of theories and basically this will also depend on each case. So we should always be paying attention to the preference of the patient and the chief complaint and even the expectations of this patient. But there are some very nice key points and I hope you guys will enjoy this. It's very important to know some very nice tips for you to select, you know, the, the best color for your restorations, right? We want to avoid something that is happening nowadays, which is, you know, people choosing very white tooth and they, they regret this choice, okay? Because they realize that it's too white, there, there is no transitions of colors, so it's not natural, it's only one single white color, and then they realize and they regret. And of course, uh, probably you know a lot of patients, you know, undergoing this situation, okay? So let's see the, the key points, and that's the main reference in your screen, okay, to follow, of course, uh, scientific information. So the first key point of today is that we should collect proper data using proper methods. So here in this case, for example, you are seeing that we are choosing uh, between two colors, 2M1 and 2M2. So of course, there are several materials, the Vita scale, and now there is even the Vita digital device to choose colors. There are several types of digital devices. Even intraoral scanners can be used now to help selecting colors of teeth, you know, so there's a lot of uh, methods that you can apply. And of course, you should choose uh, one very good scale with colors and shades and even uh, translucence levels because you want more options as the tooth of your patient may vary even within the same tooth, you know, may vary from cervical to occlusal, uh, the color, okay? So uh, different shades, you know, throughout the same tooth, okay? So, so th this actually happens a lot and you should be able to, to understand those differences of color and those transitions of color within the same tooth, okay? So this is the first key point. Also, consider the shades of lips, skin, uh, gums, and even the white of the eyes, okay? So, the white color of the eyes was previously considered as the uh, brightest color that one should select. This is still uh, a criterion uh, very important, and we can actually use it. Now, and of course, this was the second key point. Now, the third key point is that we should select materials based on occlusion and on the underlying color, okay? So, because we may have dark substrates, as we are seeing in this preparation of the 1-2, for example, in this case, and then if you have, a, you know, a brown dentin, and the dentin is very important, the dentin will dictate the color of the tooth, and then uh, uh, it will have, of course, a main role in this selection, right? And the fourth key point is, of course, that we should make it natural with transitions and translucency, if possible, okay? So, take into consideration uh, those four key points, and now I'm going to show this case to you, because this case is really important, and it's actually about uh, the, those four key points, okay? So, you are seeing the color selection here, and of course, the, uh, it's about those two letter incisors, right? So, the two upper letter incisors, and of course, the 2-2, two -two, the left letter incisor, has now a temporary crown. Now, let's see how this case um, uh, happened. And uh, basically, this was the situation before, and uh, the patient had those veneers, and of course, uh, in, the, in the red circle, you guys are seeing now that uh, the adaptation was not favorable, and of course, this was, you know, uh, actually one of the chief complaints of the patient, okay? So even in a lateral view, this was actually bothering the patient, and even if you think that the teeth are still okay, well, not really because it depends uh, on the expectations of the patient, right? So this patient was not satisfied with those crowns, okay? So let's see how uh, we solved this case. And there was a dark substrate, okay? So you, you are seeing the, that the dentin was in a um, shade of brown, of course, okay? So even with uh, post, so there is the preparation. And now it was decided to use uh, copies of zirconia, okay? So CADCAM copies of zirconia. And then, uh, in order to achieve a nice result for this patient, okay? However, the case uh, doesn't stop here, right? Because after 12 years, 
there was uh, there were some some cracks in this um, uh, porcelain fused to zirconia crown okay in those uh, two crowns and then uh, the patient decided to change those crowns again with us okay so let's see uh, actually how we did this now 12 years later we are now choosing the shades of the new the new crowns right and you are seeing that of course now the dainting changes the color a little bit so we need to uh, select the color again and now we have this 3M1 being selected and of course it's not ideal okay as you can see it's a little bit darker so we tested another color okay the 2L15 uh, and then you are seeing that we have actually uh, better results right so of course you should do this with natural light there is also we also need to consider the shades uh, created by the lip so of course there will be absence of light due to the lip to the position of the lip and we need to also to consider this and then this was actually the best color even if we apply more flash okay so the the picture is now brighter we still have you know the the colors being the same here okay so this was actually a nice color selection However, now we do digital dentistry, so we have a way to input this data in the software and then design the crown, right? So you are seeing the Zirconzan system, okay, the Modelier software, and the intraoral scans uh, were um, imported to this software, and now even using the virtual articulator, okay? So there are our videos about digital dentistry, if you guys want to check, those will be actually one link, uh, the link will be here or in the description below. So let's see how this happens. Uh, this is actually a video, okay? And you are seeing that I'm still designing the crown, right? So of course, I will still smooth the borders of this crown, okay, of those crowns. And now you have the intraoral scan, okay, the upper intraoral scan, and the antagonist uh, intraoral scan, and the uh, byte registration, okay, so the digital byte registration. And now we are going to superimpose the picture of the patient with the final result, okay, for us to understand uh, how this was actually done, okay? So now superimposing the picture of the patient and of course uh, with the CAD CAM technology and uh, using the M1, the, the milling device of the Zirconzan system, okay, we did this very nice, uh, those, those two very nice lithium desilicate crowns, all right? So uh, let's see uh, the final result, okay? And that's how we selected the color of those restorations, okay? So take into consideration the lip color, the gingival color, the skin color, white of the eyes as a, a, the brightest limit, for example. And then uh, you also need to, to choose the material according to the thickness uh, of material required and of the and according to the substrate, okay? So if you have a darker substrate, then you, if you have a very thin restoration, for example, maybe the color of the substrate will affect the final result, okay? So this is one of the most important key points, actually. All right, so I hope you guys liked this video. Please check also our video uh, uh, teaching how to adjust the principles of occlusion and stay tuned for the next videos.